Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Ford and I'm a customer engineer at Google on the Apigee Edge team. In this video, I'll show you how you can secure your API proxies with API keys. Securing your proxies not only blocks unauthorized access, but also enables features like quota management or using persistence specific to a developer, an app, or an API product. There are a couple of prereqs, so if you need to, pause the video and go visit these links. You've already built an API proxy, but I'm going to introduce you to three more concepts that we'll need to complete the lab. API products are used to package one or more API proxies for consumption and to optionally set limits on the number of requests that clients can make. App developers consume API proxies through API products, and they create apps to subscribe it to an API product. Apps are granted access via an API key and secret. So we've already got an unsecured API proxy. We're going to create these three entities and configure the API proxy to verify the API key. And with all of this in place, we can start making secured calls to our proxy. Let's see how it works. So I'm in the Edge UI, and I'm going to go find the proxy I've already created. It's a simple pass-through proxy that doesn't have any authentication. Typically, your authentication would happen in the preflow for your default proxy endpoint. I'll verify that it's deployed. I'm deploying it to our test environment. And I'll go right to the trace tool, make a request, and you can see that it succeeds. And here's our response. So now let's, let's go back and add a verify API key policy. We find it in the list of policies. I'll leave the name at the default. And you can see that it's created the policy and given us some default values. This reference here is to where the policy is going to look to find the key. You can see that it's looking for a query parameter called API key. We can change that to anything we like, or we can make it reference the headers if we like. Let's save that, which will also deploy it. And when that's finished, we'll go back to our trace tool. Start the trace session and send a request. Right away, we got back our unauthorized response. And we can look into the policy, and you can see that the policy failed to uh, validate the key. Right there, the result is false. So let's go fix it. In the interest of time, I've created those three other entities we discussed. An API product called Employees Free. I create a developer and an app. Let's go look at the app. Because the app contains the API key we need to successfully make the call. So here, you can see the key as well as the secret if you need that for an OAuth flow. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go back to my proxy use the trace tool to send another request, but this time including the API key. So if you remember, the query parameter we're looking for was API key. Again, we still see that it's returning a 401. So I'm going to give it a, the query parameter, paste in the key, click send, and now I'm getting a 200 back. Let's look at how it differs. The policy executed successfully, and you can see that right down here. But in addition, we have a, a bunch of variables in our context. We have who the developer, the developer's app, we have the email address, we have the quota. We have the product name. All of these come in 
because of that API key and the fact that it's tied to the product, the app, and the developer. And we can use that for any business logic we'd like to implement in our proxy. So let's recap what we did. First, we invoked an unprotected API proxy successfully. We protected it with API key validation and saw that our request, request began to fail. So we then used an API key and successfully made calls to the protected proxy. And we also saw how the API context was enriched with metadata about the caller. So I hope you enjoyed the video and are confident that you can go and protect your API proxies.